Hello, welcome to your favorite tech show on television where we look at issues, trends, developments in the global ICT industry. We also play host to tech innovators, big thinkers, the professionals, and of course, the entrepreneurs that are driving the Nigerian and global tech ecosystem. Today promises to be very exciting and informative as always. Stay with us. You're all watching Africa's Numero Uno Tech Show on television with Don Pedro Agambi. When we come back from this quick break, you meet our tech personality of the week. Our tech personality of the week is Engineer Ikechikun Namani, President of the Association of Telecom Companies of Nigeria. Watch this. the last few years is uh, is one of the most uh, advancing uh, sector of the ICT um, it's made the life easier for everybody uh, introduce uh, the, uh, alternative options to the traditional banking system and mode of uh, payment that we know and it has also been in line with the uh, current advancements in uh, technology in terms of uh, user services, convergence of uh, both uh, traditional systems of communication and e-commerce. So it, it has become very key and important. Um, fraud, we need to look at it from uh, multiple layers, okay? Uh, the biggest part, which really uh, is at the heart of it, is actual insider fraud. People always look at it from an external standpoint, thinking that, oh, you have uh, hackers, they've hacked into a system and all that. But from what we know and that are available to us, a situation where a staff that have access to privilege, um, information, and access, uh, decides to go rogue, you know, and decides to feel they can get away by manipulating the system, right? So uh, in that case, it's, uh, it's the most difficult part to contain, you know, and we've seen um, a lot of that. Sometimes it has to do with morality of the people, some have said maybe it's the state of the economy and the financial challenge people are facing. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, um, when specific people are given rights that gives them privileged access and they decide to betray the institution that they work for, then the only way around it is to have policies in place to quickly detect it and also to mitigate it as much as possible. The external one, uh, a lot of effort has been put in to secure the networks, putting the right uh, policies, um, you know, to ensure that uh, external attack is mitigated. Then you have the consumer side, which is purely a case of uh, people not having the right uh, cyber habits, uh, you know, people sometimes falling pray to greed, where they feel they can make quick money that they shouldn't be making, and then fall prey. You know, somebody have sent you some message and uh, tells you you're going to make some quick money that naturally you know you've not aimed. And out of greed, you decide to fall in and expose yourself, and then, you know, you are defrauded. So we have the consumer side, which is a whole new sector that uh, needs more enlightenment, educating people on the best cyber habits and when to detect a fraud before it happens so you don't fall victim. We need to separate the 
the various players in the ecosystem. A fintech company should naturally have its own ICT team in place. Okay, I give you a simple example. I operate a data center. You come to me and you want to put your infrastructure in my data center, right? I give you all the requirements to host your servers and your infrastructure in my data center, right? And I ensure that your equipment is safe and sound. Nobody can physically come in and uh, mess around with it or, or do anything wrong with it, right? I give you that as my SLA from a security standpoint. But I don't have any right to access your infrastructure, to access your servers, to even deal with content in your server. I don't get involved in that. It is still you and your team of ICT experts within your organization that should protect your server from external interference and other stuff, right? It is still you that will have to deal with your IP provider. If, for instance, you are, you are using uh, any of the ISPs for your, your IP service, you still have to protect and secure the content within your server, okay? What most of them uh, do is they don't have those experts within their organizations. So when it happens, they try to shift the blame. They could either tell you, oh, it's the bandwidth provider that is right. No, you have to secure the content in your server. You know, so, and that should be part of the prerequisite. It's not just sufficient to have a solution that the consumers can use. You've developed an app, you've developed a business model. What of the back end? Somebody have to secure it within your team. So if they are not ready to do that, the only solution is to formally outsource it to a company that you now know is 100% responsible for your infrastructure. Some companies do it, infrastructure as a service, right? So you, they, we need to understand the various players and know who does what, okay? A fintech company should, in my humble opinion, be able to secure their infrastructure, irrespective of the other ICT entities they have to interface with. Whether it's a bandwidth provider, whether it's a data center provider, if they are hosting a data center, irrespective of that, your core application, only members of your staff should be able to have access to it and should be able to secure it. What I was explaining about the insider situation is when something like that happens, and instead of your team accepting responsibility, they want to push it to external people. You, you understand? Uh, that, that's really the reality. I give you simple examples. Uh, again, let's separate the various uh, infrastructure that makes this to happen, right? You have the app, you have the software, you have, that's what separates one fintech company from the other. If not, they will all be the same, right? The, there's uniqueness about each party's solution that is an intellectual property that they've developed, and that's what makes them unique. Those solutions reside with them. If they give that out, then there's nothing that makes them, their competitors will pretty much copy what they are doing, right? So that remains with them. And the uniqueness of it is that they take that and they now put it in servers to be able to make people have access to it, okay? The management of that server should also remain with them. But you now need other members of the ICT ecosystem. A simple example, if I'm an MTN customer, and I'm using my MTN phone to access a financial service that a financial uh, fintech company is offering. Suddenly, you notice that there have to be an interaction between MTN, being that the subscriber is using an MTN uh, network to be able to access that service, right? So on one aspect, I'm seeing myself as an MTN subscriber, on the other aspect, I suddenly move to a fintech customer, still using my phone, which is provided, the network on it is provided by MTN, you get. But what you find out is that once it goes from MTN, all MTN is giving me is access to that content that is residing somewhere that MTN does not control, right? It is not the responsibility of the person that controls that platform to secure it to ensure that if I, as the user, do everything right, 
that I'm not defrauded. As I've said also, users need to also be cyber aware that I'm not the one exposing myself to be defrauded. I have to also do my role as a consumer to ensure that I, I protect my, my PIN, I protect my app, I, I, you know, I, I don't, something doesn't show up and I download just for the heck of it, if you follow. So beyond that part, the tech codes, the role they literally play most times is just providing access. It's like connecting, connecting you, the user, to the fintech platform, wherever it is located. There have to be some level of security, there are roles that need to be played. So when parties engage, this is when these roles are defined. Where does my stop and yours, where do we handshake, okay? I have to secure it until it gets to you. Once it gets to you, you are responsible to secure it, okay, um, back to the user. So it, it's, it's, um, it's a relationship that all parties must work together. But what I'm trying to get away from is this passing of blame. Somebody trying to say, no, the fault is from this entity. No, at the end of the day, if you go and look, yes, Techos may have some roles to play that is defined. Um, so where they have, um, they have become guilty of uh, not playing their role very well in the area of security, right? But from everything I know about how this works, a majority of the roles it goes back to the fintech organization, how they secure their platform, how they grant access into their platform, and the rest. Whether an ISP is providing bandwidth, or a telco is providing access to the subscriber, or a data center is providing a hosting place, at the end of the day, each of these external entities, the role they play most times is just to provide a pipe or connectivity for access. The core of the infrastructure, where the transaction actually takes place, still resides within the FinTech network. There's no bank that will tell you they don't know how the movement happened. 99.99% of the time, the bank is actually not telling you they don't know what happened to the money. They are either telling you that no, the money moved, but you authorized it. The bigger challenge all the time is not whether a bank is confused what happened. No, the bank has their process. The credit and debit is there, and where it went to is there. Anybody that says they don't know is, is playing games. The bigger challenge most times has been the issue of, I did not authorize it, and then the bank said, if you did not authorize, then who did? That is the bigger issue. Not whether the transaction happened and they know what happened, no. The only problem we see here is that most times, unfortunately, the banks are not in ready to even cooperate with you to investigate, because to them, it's a, it will take resources which they may not have to put on it, I don't know. But sometimes, they are just not they just say, hey, you authorize it, it's your problem. You can't come to tell us you did not. And then the consumer, if it truly is not authorized, it is left to deal with the issue. You, you, you follow? So, so that is where there have to be much more uh, work. Maybe the, the consumer protection agencies may have to now get involved to say, hey, if somebody has said they did not authorize a transaction, the bank needs to go beyond just saying you authorize it and it's your problem to actually investigate what happened. And if you go and check, you find that sometimes a consumer is sitting there, somebody calls you, oh yes, so so and so have happened. We are sending you a code, read it out. The consumer reads out the code. So how can you blame the bank when you are the one that reads out the code to somebody you don't know? Are you getting me? Which is when we are talking of cyber awareness, you, you, you follow. Uh, so to the bank, sorry, we set up all this process to protect you. If you, for whatever reason, allow somebody to play into the system, and you are now at a loss. It's not our problem. That's normally what you hear, you, you follow. But there could be other ways to ensure that if somebody, for instance, is opening a bank, and you, the bank, you know the person is not literate enough, is there any role you have to play to ensure that you give the person only access to things that their level of education and knowledge will secure them? If, why would you give somebody access to app when you know that the person is not literate enough to even use the app and you just allow them to use it and then they are defrauded? You, you follow me? Uh -huh. So that differentiation of uh, services available to customers based on their level of literacy and knowledge and what can protect them, maybe the banks need to start looking at that beyond just 
we made everything available to you. Use it. If you run into trouble, sorry, as long as we, we are protected, we are fine. You, you follow. Uh, and we've had cases where, based on technology, things go wrong. Yesterday, for instance, I, uh, I did a transaction. My account was debited. Then on the POS, it says failed, right? Uh, it didn't take long. The bank reversed it. Okay, now if I start fighting and making trouble and say no, my account has been debited, yeah, and the other party says no, it failed, we won't go anywhere, you understand? But they are, it was reversed, you know. We did the second time, it went through. So in my, um, in my messages, I saw debit, reversal, and then debit. Are you getting it? So sometimes the system will work, you know, but. There are times also, I remember somebody telling me they, they made some payment to me, which I never got. And I told the person, sorry, go and trace it. I never got it. You follow? Uh, maybe when they went to find out, in fact, the person I said, oh, let them check if there was a reversal. You understand? From their bank. So these things do happen, uh, which is part of the process. As you know, the beauty of ArtCon, being that it's uh, the Umbrella Association that has up to nine various classes, including FinTech. FinTech is a subclass within ArtCon. The Techos is a subclass within ArtCon. So the beauty of ArtCon is that convergence of te various technologies. That's where we bring people together. We bring the FinTech, all these people together. So some of these things we are discussing, those are things we discuss when we have our sections. Where the techo guys are discussing with the FinTech, some of these issues are put on the table, and we find ways around it. That, in fact, what you just asked is actually the reason why ArtCon exists, to be able to address some of this by bringing various people and classes of service under the same umbrella so that we can be able to make progress. And we are doing a lot of that. But it's just that these are not things you put on the press or it's in the public. These are all done when people are sitting down in a round table. Thank you. I appreciate it. Wow, that was Engineer Kechikin Namani, President of the Association of Telecommunications Companies of Nigeria. I'm afraid that's of our time will allow us this week on this highly informative and educative package of your program for comment and observation. Please reach us on the numbers and email now showing on your screen. On behalf of the entire production crew, thanks for watching. Same time, same station. I'll be back next time. I'll see you.